Hello subscribers, all 25,000 of you. We're gonna do an, a great video today about replacing your garage door opener. Look at this thing up here. I'm gonna get up really close so I can show it to you. This thing's from, I think the 70s. I called the Genie Company, cause that's what this thing is, and asked, gave them the model number. And um, you know, they told me, they actually want it back. They wanna put it in some kind of a Genie Museum. So, um, uh, I'm gonna replace this thing finally. Now, as crazy as it sounds, I did a video maybe a couple of years ago on making this thing Wi-Fi capable. Did that. I'm gonna link to that video up here in the corner. Look at this. That that piece attached to the uh, screws on the on the device here. Operate it with your phone. You can open and close the garage door. Anyway, I might reinstall that thing on the new uh, Genie garage door opener. So let's see what we've got. So what we have here is this Genie Stealth Drive Connect, uh, one and a quarter um, horsepower motor. It, it apparently comes, I haven't even opened this box yet, comes with a battery backup, remotes, it's got the wireless keypad, which actually, I actually already have this one installed, but I'll put another one out here anyway. Um, and also the uh, safety system for down where you um, where you would walk, so that way the garage door doesn't hit you in the head, right? Um, let me get this thing out of the box, and we're gonna see what parts we have. I'm gonna have to disconnect the old one, which means I'm gonna have to shut this garage door, and um, we're gonna take this thing one step at a time after I read the installation manual. We're going to take all this down and apart. We're going to unplug it all first. And undo the wires. Alright, we got this piece out. And now this guy. Like the other side just did. this thing down. Now I make sure that the width of this is going to work for this. So I may have to play around with that for a little bit during the install to get that up there first. I'm going to read the uh, instructions and make sure that I'm not doing it in the wrong order so I don't have to take everything back down again. So the first part of the installation is, is the, the beginning rail. This goes by the, uh, the door and they want you to install the, install the little uh, pulley where the belt drive will slide around with a, uh, a pin that gets held with a cotter pin right here that's in then they want this little bolt here and I'm just gonna hand tighten this nut on here just for now and what this does is it stops this piece which is really going to carry the door uh, this is where the the bracket that lifts the door will be attached goes on here and that bolt simply stops it from going any farther okay now we're going to move on and install the rest of the uh, the tracks Now we have to install this piece on the end. And this will get attached to the uh, the driver of the uh, <clears throat> the belt driver. So next we're going to put the uh, belt through the pulley and the teeth are supposed to face the rail and there's two ends to this uh, this um, belt. One has a, a gold end one has a silver end. We're putting the gold end through this side. And then we're going to go through this piece here. So the gold end goes through here in case you missed that. 
comes off. <laughs> and then we're going to put it through here. Looks like that thing doesn't stay together until I uh, attach it to the, the head, the driver. And the belt goes around this thing here, like this. Okay, and then it goes back. I think you need two people, two hands. You're definitely not one hand plus one hand holding a camera. This guy is going to join both sides. I'm going to put the camera down so you can watch me do that. So the screws are threaded in the opposite direction. So that way when this thing spins like this, it's tightening down on both of them. You're supposed to hold on to this thing and spin it with your hands because you don't want it spinning the, the belt. So it's at least tight enough now where the belt's not going to come off and these pieces aren't going to come out again like you saw happen a few minutes ago. So I installed the bracket that holds the rail up against the back wall here. Um, had to cut out this pegboard put uh, a 2 by 4 in the back to have a spot for it because where the uh, rail was for the other door isn't exactly where it needed to be for this one. Um, it really is going to, for every installation, it's going to be different so you're going to have to read the instructions when you get yours and do some measuring to see where's your, where yours will go. But now that we have this here, I'm going to install the rail onto the power head You'll watch me do that next and then we're going to clip it into here. So we got the power head and uh, you just got to follow the instructions to see which way this thing goes. We are lowering this down over the drive. Okay, it's on here. The belt is over the teeth of the sprocket which is important and now we're going to put these self-tapping lags in here. Okay, so you can see what I had to do here. And it actually shows using a ladder in the instructions. So next step is to put this pin through, um, I'll do it through the top hole and we'll see what that looks like. So we're in there and uh, now we want to um, open the garage door and I want to see the spacing between the rail and the, and the top of the garage door so I know where I'm going to install it along these brackets and to see whether I actually need to move these brackets at all too because uh, maybe not, that might be in a good spot. Alright, now we're going to uh, check out the level on this thing. That's actually pretty good. Now we're going to install the bracket that they sent here to lift the door. Now we have the pin that goes and attaches it to the piece that actually moves the door back and forth. Next step is we need to connect the door to the belt and this piece here gets connected onto here, this piece. And so the, right now with this thing dropped down, it's disengaged. When you click it like this, it'll engage this piece here. So what we're going to do is uh, leave this engaged like that and then uh, lift the door and once this thing travels over to here it'll catch. And so you know if you ever have a situation where you have a power outage or you want to just lift the door manually you would pull this down with a string that we'll install later and then uh, it disengages from the belt. So we're we're going to program the down limit and what it's telling me to do 
is press the down button and hold it until the long LED lights blue. Okay, and then it says release it and press and hold until the door is closed. And then it wants me to hit the program button. Now it wants me to do the uh, up limit. Same process. Hold the up arrow button until the long LED lights and then press it again until the whole thing opens. Released. Press again. Now I need to release this thing when I want the door to stop. That's just about right. Hit the program button. Okay, so now this thing should be set for the up and the down limit. Now we gotta program the, uh, the keypad and the door, the door button. So now we need to install these uh, infrared uh, safety, I guess you want to call them uh, detectors, or you know, they go on each side of the garage door to detect that say, something or somebody is in the way and it'll stop the door and, uh, from traveling down any farther. And uh, you're going to wire this. We've already started to pull the wire through and uh, strip these wires. They'll connect here to the screws. You'll screw this into the wall on both ends and then run it to the power head up into uh, the left hand side right here. We're going to do that right now and after it's installed I'll show you what it looks like. So we have the sensors installed and there's a green one and a red one on the other side. Okay, It really doesn't matter so much uh, which end of the wire you put on which screw here although I try to keep it consistent and it, there's a wire that has uh, you know a, a line on it and one that doesn't and I try to make sure that I did the same on both sides uh, and then I twist the same ones together up on the scent up on the uh, the um, uh, the power head now here's the red light it's blinking because I'm in the way okay but now you want it to be solid I'm going to this could be a, a something that you're gonna struggle with it has to be solid for the door to operate. If it's blinking, then the door won't operate. And I'm going to do another video really soon that I'll link up in here and also at the end of this video to show you what to do when you get these error codes with all the blinks. Okay, But it has to be solid for it to work. And when I first at attached them, the red was on this side and it wasn't operating properly because it was getting interference from the, the other garage door sensor on the other side because they were too close together. That's apparently one of the things that happens. It's a extremely long, complicated explanation, which, like I said, I'll get into in the next video. Next, we're gonna install a battery backup, and uh, this thing clips very easily onto here and gets uh, plugged in there. This really couldn't be much easier. There's a couple of slots here on the top, as you can see. And this thing here goes in like that. And then this plugs in here. Let me make sure I've got it in the right spot. I've got to spin it. That's it. Battery backup installed in less than 30 seconds. Let's program this uh, remote. This is the wireless remote that you can screw onto the outside of the garage door and I want to program it here first, and once it's programmed, then I'll screw it on uh, to the uh, trim on the outside. Got to remove this tab for the batteries. Now, um, what they want you to do is first get the power head in program mode. Once you do that, it wants you to um, make sure the keypad, keypad light is off, which it is, and then press three five seven and then press the up and down button three or four times until the door operates 
once you're you've gotten this done then you can change the code away from 357 into whatever code you like anyway let's try to see if this can work all right three five seven one two three okay guess we got this thing programmed now let's see if we can make that work again three five seven all right now we have these other remotes for the car and you would program it the same way we program this one hitting the uh, program button waiting for the uh, purple light to flash and then hitting the code and the uh, or the button twice uh, you can also program it into the uh, uh, in your car if you have uh, one of those buttons up by the uh, above your or on your rear view mirror like like I do which that's where I'll program uh, this garage door I won't be using one of these all right we are installing the uh, remote or the uh, opener keypad on the on the side of the garage I sunk this screw in here already which clips onto here and uh, let's do that there we go and I've got uh, the next hole already pre-drilled There we go, it's on solid. Batteries will go back, and then uh, we're ready to go. So we installed the little cord that will disengage the, uh, the door from the track in the event that uh, you wanna raise it and lower it manually. And I already installed the light bulb here. Uh, now the little plastic cover gets installed. Let's see if we can do that with one hand while holding the camera. Now a little wire maintenance. I'm gonna take care of this with, with some zip ties because I don't like having a mess like this. I'm gonna uh, tie it all up and that's it. And I, like I said earlier, I'm using this Wi-Fi um, uh, garage door, smart garage door controller, which I have synced with the Smart Life app. It already is working with this garage door and uh, this is what I plan to use. I have the other garage door on here and a lot of other things in the house. I think I linked to that video earlier in this uh, earlier in this process and we'll put it at the end as well. What did you think of that install? You know what? It was uh, fairly easy. Uh, there are there, It is a process, especially if you uh, don't have an existing garage door opener attached to your garage door. At least I had a spot where I knew the rail would get attached and, and I already had these, these uh, brackets in the ceiling and in a spot where I didn't have to move them again. So from that perspective, it was easier. Um, but uh, it went together pretty well. It did take a few hours. Uh, but what I, I like most about this thing is it's very quiet, much quieter than uh, the other unit that I have on the other door over there. Uh, and I like the fact that it the remotes sync pretty easily. I was able to get that going, and um, uh, I think I think this is my favorite garage door opener now. I wish I had one for the other side. Maybe that's a hint to the people at Genie. So um, if you enjoyed this, uh, I have a link to where you can purchase this item down in the description. It would help the channel if you did. And uh, if you have any questions about your install of your garage door opener, please let me know. Thanks for watching again, everyone. I'll see you next time.